Well, we want to start off with a question on email. This question comes from Bonnie. She says, can you please help me understand if we can fall from grace? I feel very confused about a statement my friend made about a pastor falling from grace. My understanding is that there's nothing I can ever do that would keep me from the grace of God. I may not receive it, but it's always available from him. Help. Thanks. All right. Well, Bonnie, thank you for your question uh, via email. Falling from grace. It's an expression that people often use, and yet it's so often misunderstood. Uh, And so what I would say on that front is that, you know, we typically think that falling from grace is when someone really started misbehaving. Oh, they were doing so well. They were so consistent. They were so obedient. And then, boom, something happened and they fell from grace. Well, even though the media might use that term that way, that's not the way God's word uses the expression fall from grace. When God's word talks about falling from grace, it is, in fact, falling back toward something. When you fall away from something, you fall toward something else. And so in the scriptures, what we see is that when a person is falling from grace, they are falling toward law. And that's what the Galatian problem was. When Paul, in his fiery, passionate letter to the Galatians, was chewing them out about their issues of legalism, he talked about them falling from grace, being cut off, cut away from Christ, because they were seeking to be justified by the works of the Jewish law instead of being justified by faith. So there's just an important concept to, to recognize there that if we uh, are a person who has fallen from grace, it's because we were introduced to grace and yet we rejected it. We were introduced to the gospel and yet we rejected the gospel. So this is not a, a picture of someone who got saved and then lost their salvation. Uh, The expression fallen from grace is reserved for those who flirted with Jesus. They flirted with the gospel. They looked at it. And yet, after, you know, having the gospel proclaimed to them, they chose to go back to a Jewish temple, to the Jewish law, in order to try to get right with God through their works. So it's not about someone who was super obedient and then fell into disobedience. It's about someone who was acquainted with the gospel but ultimately just rejected justification by faith. So I hope that helps you, Bonnie, as you think about your security. The Bible is pretty clear on that. It says no one can snatch you out of God's hand. It says that he is able to save you completely because he always lives to intercede for you, Bonnie, and that's for any sin imaginable. He says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Uh, Nothing separates us from the love of God. It also says in Romans that the gifts and the calling are irrevocable. That is, they cannot be revoked. People are trying to employ a use it or lose it scenario in Christianity, and nothing could be further from the truth. It's not use it or lose it. It's that the gifts and the calling are irrevocable. They will never be revoked. So we have tons of security and safety in Jesus, and quite frankly, that is what is inspiring and motivating about our new life in Christ. It is the love of God, not the fear of God. It is the love of God, not being scared of God, that motivates us to upright living.